Travel Across America with me. A picture post for when you need a helping hand? Where is this? It's Rocky Mountain National Park. I promised I would take you there. It was the best spring day you could ever hope for. Rocky Mountain National Park, established in 1915. Travel west on U.S. Highway 34 from Loveland to Estes Park, where the route follows Big Thompson River, bound by sheer cliffs and tilted strata of Big Thompson Canyon. You'll want to watch my video on Big Thompson Canyon. This fantastic gateway leads to Colorado's largest park. It was fairly crowded the day that we went, as you can see by the cars lined up to pay to enter the park. If you buy an annual park pass, it makes things easier, and it makes a lot of sense if you're visiting two or more parks. Why do you go to Rocky Mountain National Park? Well, of course, to see the Rocky Mountains and the snow. Constructed between 1926 and 1932, the 48-mile Trail Ridge Road, or known as Beaver Meadow Road Scenic Byway, climbs to 12,183 feet into the tundra in this incredible park. Above Treeline, the All-American Road is the highest paved through road in North America. Well, maybe it wasn't through that day. The road was closed because of snow. They only remove the snow to a certain point until winter is over, which uh, that varies, but typically sometime in May. Crossing the magnificent park in the Continental Divide, it is open late May to mid-October and worth every mile. We have done that several times, and this was our third visit to the park, maybe fourth. We were not able to continue through. This is a fabulous park to visit. We spotted a fox in the woods. There were some hikers and they had a couple of dogs and the fox decided to uh, hightail it up into the protection of the trees. I want to show you just some beautiful scenery that we enjoyed that day at Rocky Mountains Parks. What is a park anyway? In the early 1800s, French-speaking trappers called Broad Mountain Meadows parks, P-A-R-Q-U-E-S, meaning enclosures. Later, ranchers used these large open basins to graze livestock. Today, Rocky Mountain National Park preserves many of these parks within its boundaries. Makes sense now. Fortunate fall visitors will hear bugling male elk in rut. If you have never heard this, I want to encourage you to visit a national park during that time so that you can hear this and see this. It's quite the show. More than 150 structures scattered throughout the park reveal that explorers, homesteaders, miners, hunters, ranchers, mountain men, and Indian tribes marked the landscape for centuries. Snapshot views at this park capture quintessential Colorado. Five visitor centers serve the busy park which is also an international biosphere reserve. And I give this park five stars. If you were planning a picnic on this day, you might need to have picked a better place. The elevation at Hidden Valley Nature Trail is 9,410 feet. We also went to the Gateway Fall River Visitor Center. I like to get the passport stamps. That is also something else that you ought to investigate are the passport books that are sold through the National Park Service. And every park that you visit, you can get a date stamp marking your visit to that beautiful place. They're all beautiful, I can say that. I've been to hundreds of them. Never been disappointed. We wanted to go see Bear Lake. We had visited Bear Lake on our first visit to the park many years ago and thought this would be a great place to return. Well, it was a little different this time. There had been snow on the ground the previous visit but this time, it was completely covered in snow. There was no reason to hike the perimeter of the lake because you could just walk across the lake. As I always say, well, maybe I don't always say hiking boots, but hiking boots on the ground. 
and classic road trip. I was worried that these hiking boots were going to crush right through this snow. There is so much more I want to show you. We have two or three more stops. So hang on, keep watching. Well, I might be a little bit too heavy to be walking out this far. Uh, it's getting a little thin. Back to the car, we've got to see more. Let's try the Alberta Falls Lockvale Mills Lake hike. We made it to this bridge. We could not go any farther because we didn't have crampons on our boots. What a bust, didn't even think about it. They told you to do that in the park newspaper, but I didn't have a park newspaper ahead of time. But it sure is picturesque, wouldn't you say? Have you ever been to this park? What was your experience like? Okay, let's try the Sprague Lake Nature Trail. We're bound to be able to do this one. This is also a shuttle bus stop. In the prime season, you can ride a shuttle bus throughout the park. And this might be helpful for those of you not comfortable driving in this type of terrain. This trail's pretty muddy, but it certainly is beautiful. It's all iced over. It doesn't face these geese. Simply captivating. What is your favorite national park? Do you want to know what my favorite national park is? Take a guess and watch these ducks. They're so graceful. We continued the loop trail around Sprague Lake. Abner Sprague, who operated Sprague Lake Lodge from 1910 to 1940, once wrote about the fast pace of modern tourism. Oh, this should be good. There are those you can call nothing but tourists. Those that can go tearing from coast to coast and back again on their vacations are tourists. When they reach home from their travels, they are not certain where they saw this or that. Oh, Abner, isn't that sad? This shallow 13-acre lake is a remnant of a resort once owned here by Abner Sprague. Sprague, Sprague, not sure. An expert guide and host. Just before Rocky Mountain National Park was established in 1915, Sprague enlarged this lake by damming the far end to create better fishing for his lodge guest. Thank you, Abner. Two more quick stops. I do want to encourage you to plan ahead when you visit places like Rocky Mountain National Park. I mentioned earlier about the park newspaper. It's the Rocky Mountain National Park Visitor Guide, and many times you can only get those when you enter the park. It is a great idea to pull over for a few minutes and scan this. It will give you ideas on hikes, things to do, places to go, and that way you can prioritize based on the time you have allowed to spend. Next, we headed towards Moraine Park. As we traveled down the road, we found road construction and were diverted towards Cub Lake Trailhead. That was okay, and we found this interesting thing. It's an elk enclosure? No, it's an elk exclosure. What's an exclosure? These temporarily fenced areas were established as part of a 20-year elk and vegetation management plan to allow the recovery of riparian vegetation, such as willows, and to restore the habitat value for riparian-dependent wildlife species. These fences, or exclosures, each about 20 acres in size are more like sieves than fences, designed to let most animals, including us, freely move in and out. The exceptions? Mostly elk. Excluding these animals provides for habitat restoration along the park streams in Horseshoe Park and Moraine Park. How well do you think these exclosures are working? I don't have a clue, but the thing that I found cool is that there was a lock, and there's this key just dangling there. You could go right in but it was so muddy, I didn't even want to get my hiking boots that muddy. But it made for a cool picture. Don't you think this is a cool picture? If you like my picture, put a comment below. Let me know. We pulled over one more time to walk over this incredible brand new bridge. It leads to Cub Lake. We don't have time. We need to get back to Fort Collins. I did want to show you how picturesque it is from this vantage point. We made a quick stop at the Beaver Meadows Visitor Center to get another park stamp. As I mentioned earlier, we had gone to the Fall River Visitor Center and you can get a different park stamp at each visitor center. Follow me to lots of gorgeous, spectacular, historic places around our wonderful nation. Hiking boots on the ground. Unclassic road trip. Travel with me somewhere fun and amazing.